This clip highlights a bug that I ran into when I was trying to integrate netcode into Unity's starter asset pack. It looked great locally, the player was moving around very smoothly, but once it was deployed to multiplay, it became very jittery, like the player was being shoved into the ground. And it took a lot longer than anticipated to figure out what was happening. So I want to talk about how I got to this point and the steps I took to solve it. I wanted to upgrade the project's appearance that I have for my demos. Uh, I, you know, using a capsule is great. You can see him move around and the synchronization is really simple and basic and it kind of gets to the point, but having an actual character running around the screen would, well, that would be a lot more engaging. So I, I looked at the third person controller asset pack, the one that Unity has, and I thought, well, I'll just take the net code from my old project that I just put out and then shim it into these new projects and you know, because I've done multiplay and this netcode integration for some time now, I thought it would be a simple two to three day upgrade. Well, wrong, wrong. Three days ago, I got the project set up, worked out a few bugs, and deployed it to multiplay. And I'm immediately hit with this jittery, shaking problem, violent conflict of the character just not being able to sit steadily in place. Even without putting any movement or anything at all, this character is just shaking and moving around and just teleporting like it's just getting shoved down into the depths of whatever. So I thought, okay, well, this is a small conflict into the code from my older demo projects to this new input system. And well, two and a half days later, I finally figured out what the issue was. So I start to drill in, I start to debug and I'm tackling the low hanging fruit, the obvious things and the really quick, easy checks that you can do to kind of hope you're going to get that big result that, you know, the least amount of effort, the biggest result when you're trying to debug something like this. Like there's no exception to say the issue is here and then you can go and start there. This is kind of you have this problem. It's nebulous. How do you go about solving this? So I think with something like this, it made sense to start at the top at this, what I'm calling the debug pyramid and kind of start at the top level and work your way down through the more complex issues, trying to narrow down where this bug is, is coming from. And of course it, it makes sense to start at the top here, but you know, if you added a library to your project and it completely broke everything, then you're going to start a little lower on this pyramid because there's no real low hanging fruit. If you add a library, I thought that this would just be, okay, I'm going to start here. It's going to be a couple issues. I'm going to have to kind of work out. And then next thing I know, it ends up taking a lot longer. The first couple things I checked on were the prefabs and, and the, the player armature and, and was it nested correctly? Was there some kind of problem with the way that I had the player container capturing all this other stuff that the Unity asset package provided? And I thought that maybe there was some conflict in how the collision detection was occurring. Uh, that ended up not being an issue, but I thought, well, maybe there was some component setting that was wrong. And of course, there actually was a couple little things that I had picked up along the way. Like, for example, one of the code items was this physics check sphere thing where I noticed that you can actually check against an actual specific layer or set of layers. And I thought that was really cool. So, you know, there's always these little tangents when you're trying to figure out a problem that you end up learning a lot more about the subject matter because you're you're kind of going off on these little paths. And yes, it's time consuming. And yes, it added to the overall debug time. But along the way, you're picking up all these little tidbits and you're learning more about the, the nature of how these things are supposed to work. And then I looked into, well, was the gravity or the calculations with the gravity correct and, and why maybe this was being applied. Maybe something got mixed up in, when I was taking my other code and adding it to this project. And you know, that, that didn't pan out. And then was there some issue with a race condition? Maybe the scene was loading because now you're in a network uh, kind of frame where you have your awake, your start, your on network spawn methods. And these methods will change order based on whether an object is dynamically spawned or placed before the scene is loaded. They call that in-placed objects um, or in-place spawning. So I played around with that a little bit to see if maybe that was an issue. And this was ending up towards the end of the first day. I was still deploying directly to multiplay. I was making this small code change, 
waiting 10 minutes for it to get ready on multiplay, deploying it back there, deploying it on this machine and running the test. And then it just kept failing. So by the end of the first day, I had about 15 fleets. I said, this is wasting too much time for this 10 minute chunks each time I want to check this. So I said, okay, I'm going to wake up tomorrow, get the local environment set up and I'm going to hit this full steam ahead. So day two starts, I'm fresh, I'm ready to go. I've got my local environment. I've got a client build in the editor here along with a server build. And then I ship my PC build back there and it takes no more than maybe two minutes uh, between code changes to get you know, a result of whether or not my efforts are, are coming through or not. And so I thought for sure I'd be able to crack this very quickly and have this all working by midday. I tried to dynamically load the different components and parts of the prefabs you know, programmatically linking them together, thinking that there was some kind of conflict with, you know, having parts on the remote representation of the player. You know, maybe there was some conflict with how the character controller was loaded. And and I, I tried to look into the collision detection problem. I think I switched over to using the is grounded function that comes with the character controller. That didn't yield anything. You know, I, I did that because I looked at the check sphere, the gizmo sphere that it was drawing, and it was flashing green, red, green, red, like it was constantly having a problem. And so I just stuck a bandaid on there because I think it was giving negative, you know, Y coordinate values. So I stuck a bandaid that said, don't go negative. And then that kind of fixed that problem. But, you know, when it synced over to the other computer, the other client, it was still having that jittery problem, that, that really uneasy uh, collision with the environment. So it wasn't the collision detection that that didn't break. That wasn't the problem. So I moved some calls around. I disabled and commented out some you know chunks of code trying to narrow down this bug location i tried so many things i just lost track and, and at this point i was thinking that maybe my gut was wrong maybe this wasn't a simple issue so i continue to debug this problem and i'm, I'm digging into the movement and jump math and i i find myself printing out what the client is sending to the server what the server is receiving and then what the other clients receiving for the position synchronization and it turns out that it's sending negative values. I'm not sitting at any negative coordinate at all. This position is all positive values. So I'm thinking, is the underlying network transform library broken? Well, it's usually never the underlying library. And if it is, a quick Google search will turn up a GitHub issue or something like that. So I'm slowly easing into the like third tier of this debug pyramid where I'm thinking, well, is it this underlying library problem? Is there some fundamental thing broken? And, and then I get sucked into the currents of the sea of debug despair. When you're debugging an issue with an unknown point of origin, the entire debugging process should be an informed effort to try to narrow down the scope of where this issue is coming from. When you enter the sea of debug despair, all thought strays from space and time. To avoid this dark state of debugging, make sure your efforts are guided by knowledge and a structured process of elimination. I, I know it's almost never the library's fault. So at this point, I'm thinking, ask for some help. So I check out Unity's multiplayer Discord, and there's a lot of activity in there, a lot of good answers getting thrown around. While it didn't yield a direct answer, it got me unstuck. It got me back out of the sea of despair. I was back on that second tier level because it wasn't an underlying library problem. And I just decided, well, let's just comment out all the movement code, something I probably should have done two days before. And I realize when I run the game, there's no movement code, there's no jump, everything is just commented out. You cannot control this player. Well, the player comes in, spawns, and just falls through the earth. And it just completely surprised me. I never expected the player to just fall through the ground at this point. So I do a quick Google search, and the first post that comes up, and there was actually two that I found, the first one that comes up just says, Oh, make sure you're not mixing your character controller with your rigid body. And I just knew immediately that was the solution to this problem. This whole two and a half days worth of effort was just a simple artifact that I had left over from my other project when I was importing these characters together. You can't mix character controllers and rigid bodies, at least in this, in this form, because they basically are accomplishing the same mechanisms of collision just through two different versions. I remove the rigid body and immediately everything works. The players are being synchronized perfectly. No jitter, no falling through the earth. I got it. I finally figured it out.
With these extended debug sessions, where it ended up being some real small bug, I, I, I like to look back like at a post-mortem and think, what happened? What could I have done differently? And I think initially I discarded the fact that a rigid body couldn't cause this problem. And I, I kind of put that in a box of improbable solutions and never opened it back up, never considered it. And I, and I think ultimately though, it was a lack of understanding about what the character controller is doing and what its function is and purpose. And it's kind of a new thing. And I haven't really messed around with it too much. So that lack of awareness and understanding cost me two days. And, and also I spent more time trying to just find solutions. Like I stopped trying to narrow down what the problem should be and just tried to just brute force find solutions. So I guess I'm trying to say is make sure that with your debugging efforts that you're you're consciously trying to narrow down the scope of the problem you're trying to find. Especially with these like there's no exceptions to point you in the right direction and your efforts should be is it this part of the code? Is it this part of the project that's causing it? And then move on to the next one. And I, I think I got derailed early on and it was hard to get it back on track. And of course, talking to somebody usually helps. It usually gives you another perspective. It kind of jolts you back on the right path. And I guess the silver lining here is I have a much better understanding of how the character controller fits into this multiplayer setup. I understand the function and math a lot more intimately with the starter pack assets. Like I, there was some new code in there that I didn't really understand at the beginning of this effort. And now I, I get it and I can use that on future tasks and problems that I run into. And ultimately my gut instinct was right. It was an easy fix. And I'll likely never make that mistake again. And if you like hearing these types of stories, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Some of you may be wondering, well, what's the fourth level of this pyramid? Well, the fourth level of the debug pyramid is where you encounter the unknowns, the random, the apocryphal. Think haunted computer systems and even cosmic rays. If you raise your eyebrow at that last remark, it actually happened before. A cosmic ray was concluded to be the most likely cause for a voting machine malfunction. Veritasium put out a great video on this. It's like one of the most extreme debugging cases in recorded history and you have to watch this video. I'll put the link in the description because if you're into programming or debugging, it's definitely worth a watch.